Jetzt bringen wir zurück in die 10 und wir sind jetzt in Jahr 82. They will, the audience to the show will see work mostly of the last 10 years. Um, there are a couple of paintings a little older from 1999 and then there's a wide a representation of almost every year between 2000 and today. Um, it's an interesting selection. I always think when you put together an exhibition, the question is what story are you going to tell? Um, and when I first saw the director's dream list for the paintings, I thought it was a very interesting and unusual take. It didn't have an obvious story, so I wasn't quite sure what we were talking about here and how the paintings would work together. But I think he made it such an interesting and unusual choice. Not always the most obvious paintings, but he's had a wonderful eye for picking out quite eccentric paintings and quite very strong paintings, but that represent such different parts. Um, but I think the strength of the show is really that you see it as one body of work. There's no, you can't really tell what came first and what came later. The work, it works, I think it works very well as a body of work and it doesn't matter the date. You see how the works feed into one another and that there's a cycle and things sometimes, you know, the way things come back and recede, um, I think that shows very well. So I feel very happy about it. Usually, um, when I begin, I don't have a clear idea in mind of how the painting will end up. For me, all the excitement is in the working. The process is when all the ideas take place. I'm not like some artists who can take time from the studio and still be having ideas about the work. I really need to be in the process and in the painting. Um, but I always work on lots of things at the same time. So in the studio there's sometimes 10, 20 or even more paintings at once. But all different sizes and drawings and watercolours and everything, they all feed into one another. Um, which I think the show actually echoes. Um, it kind of echoes the process of the way that, you know, I start one thing, but it might give me an idea for another. I often start three or four things around the same time because I find each painting throws up so many different questions. You couldn't possibly answer them all in one painting. So, in a way, it's to take the pressure off one painting. So, because I think my main problem is I overwork things. So if I work on three or four things at once, I can pursue different directions in different paintings, even if they're around the same, a similar motif. So with these paintings, yeah. and actually with the one opposite of the single figure of a male, there was something very specific, a specific motif that I began with. But that's actually unusual for me. But with these, I might, I'd start with the, there were quite a few of these paintings. I'd start knowing it was going to be this group of women, but they all were quite different from each other. So. In a way, I love to have a motif because it takes care of, you know, it's sort of, that's taken care of, and then within that, the magic, you hope, will happen. You know, you, you can see, the excitement for me is just all the different possible ways it can take. And I also think, you know, you've sort of got your whole life's work set up for you because there's no way you could answer all the questions that arise in just one painting. Well, the most obvious one is, I feel less guilty now about being a painter. Because in the late 80s, early 90s, when I was an art student um, and everybody hated painting um, and you had to really defend painting, you had to really explain why you were painting, and you had to have good reasons for everything you did, you had to have a good reason for even picking up a brush and people were very against oil paint on canvas so you felt back then that you had to really have a good reason, which was difficult because I didn't have a good reason. I just wanted to paint, I couldn't explain it, you know, I loved painting and I loved other people's paintings and I wanted to respond in paint, so um, in a way that's, you know, people, you know, times change, I think it always moves in cycles when people say painting's dead, then it isn't, then it's dead again, it's really tiresome. Um, but we happen to be at the moment in a time where people are more receptive to painting. Probably it's changing again. But I guess I feel more confident because now I've been doing it for a while. You know, also when you first exhibit, you're so surprised that anyone is interested in your work. Um, so I, after 20 years, I guess I'm a little bit more confident because I think, well, people are interested. You know, so there's nothing better than actually 
having people want to see what you do. Um, but in the studio, I've always tried to keep the same attitude. Um, I pretend nobody's going to see it. I pretend there is no show. I never work for a show. Um, for example, I have a show in Paris opening this weekend, but the paintings were done at least six months before. I always work far beyond, way before there's a deadline, because I really hate that pressure of thinking, this painting has to work out, this painting has to be good, this painting has to be for a show. So back to the process, I always work in a way where I can destroy things. It's fine if it doesn't work out. I can work on something and then put it aside for a year. And there's no pressure to finish. So it happens very naturally. And you know, hopefully you just have to block out the outside world in the work. The, most the best part is starting and the worst part is finishing. <laughs> so, I mean, finishing is famously difficult. And I think especially with my kind of painting, because in a way it's never finished. You could always, even now, you know, I'll be saying like, ah, could I come in? And you know, there's very, there's never a moment where you say, basta, done. You know, I mean, there's, it's kind of, it's always guessing a little bit. I often say, you know, when I think a painting's very close to being done, then I'll leave it, I hang it on the wall and live with it for a few weeks and then it tells me if it needs more or not. But one's never fully satisfied. So you could always, you always feel like you could probably have done something different. Um, but yeah, finishing is very, very difficult. Um, just knowing when, because in a way it's so random. Sometimes things look fantastic after just a few hours. You know? and, other t and you sort of the beginning is so great because it's so fresh, it's so alive, it's so many possibilities. And in a way, it, then it all goes downhill because once you've gone back into it, it becomes much more difficult after the first few days and then it becomes more of a struggle. Of course that's satisfying, but it's not as so much fun. <laughs> okay. I'm afraid I might repeat myself that I've said this before, but I've never felt I've always, it's always annoyed me the way that if you're a painter, people assume that you're a painter in this kind of religious way where you, it means that you believe that painting is the best art or the only art and you're not interested in other ways of making art. Whereas if you're a filmmaker, nobody assumes you hate painting or sculpture. But so I just find it frustrating really that people still talk about painting as if it's different from the other arts. I feel that in a time where there's so much multimedia and people working in so many different disciplines, that somehow still when it comes to painters, people are more strict with painters somehow and um, they're harder on us. Um, I think because it's been around for so long, I guess, it's very easy to criticize painting, that it's not moving anything forward. People are always going to paint. And it's very hard to do anything new in painting, very hard. And in a way you have to give up. You can't, you're not going to reinvent painting, but you just hope that you're going to move it forward a tiny bit. Um, but I think it goes back to knowing that you're working for yourself, that I can make some change in a painting, or over a couple of years I can feel I've done something so radical and to an outside viewer, it might seem like nothing changed, but it has yeah. to, in a personal way, you feel like you've made a giant step. In the big picture, it's not really relevant, it's not really important, but, um, you know, I can't say that, I mean, I'm a painter, so of course I think there's still somewhere for painting to go. On a bad day, I think, you know, what's the point, because everything's been done in painting. But, you know, then what's the point in any of it? <laughs> yeah. You know. I don't really have a good sound bite for you about, I wish I could say something about painting forever, but <laughs> painters will paint, people will look yeah. at it or not look at it, and for a painter, you know, it is going to be endlessly fascinating moving around pigment on a flat surface. Uh, maybe other people are interested or maybe they're not, but... What, what frustrates me is, and I think people can be very narrow-minded and judge painting as something boring or old-fashioned, sometimes without really just looking at it. 